Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you feel the presence of the Lord? Tremendous joy it is to be in the presence of the Lord. You know, I think sometimes that we might take for granted the fact that God actually showed up. You know, He don't owe me anything. And so the fact that He would show up in our worship forums as we exalt Him, that He would come by tonight, says a lot about His character. The book of St. Luke chapter 10 is where I'll take my text tonight, the book of St. Luke chapter 10, and as you're turning there, uh, I, I would like to mention briefly here uh, just how appreciative I am for the invitation to be here uh, with all of you all this weekend and the barns and the farmers what what wonderful gracious hosts that represent the Lord in a first class way. Amen. 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 How many of you know that we represent the Lord? Amen. 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 I appreciate your worship tonight and I appreciate the kindnesses uh, all of the good food in the room and uh, just the many, uh, just the great way that I've been treated since I've been here. And uh, I appreciate that. I always like being fed good. I don't know if you can tell that. Uh, and, uh, so it's just, uh, just an honor to be here and I appreciate that. Amen. 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 Today, Brother Dylan... Uh, took me by alumni hall <laughs> where I probably spent my whole check <laughs> on orange clothes to take back home. I'm going to take my coat off, but if y'all don't know the job that Butch Jones is doing in Knoxville right now, I could preach about that a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it's good to be in Tennessee and the Volunteer State and my home. I, I like to say from time to time, I may be living in Missouri, but uh, I was born on a mountaintop in Tennessee. And so uh, it is a joy to be back home, and I felt all those good vibes when I got off the plane, and it said welcome to Nashville. I graduated from college here in Nashville, and uh, just good to be back home. And so I'm honored for the invitation. God bless you. The book of St. Luke chapter 10 is where I'll take my text. I'll begin reading. At verse number 38, now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. But Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away away from her. I'm going to preach for just a few moments tonight. Pardon me, Martha. I think I'll worship Pardon me, Martha. I think I'll worship Would you lift your hands and your voices to the Lord? Let's invite him to speak to us for the next few months. Praise God. Praise God. 
you turn around and high five your neighbor and say the devil is about to have a real bad acutely aware of the family that he will be fellowshipping with in our text today. He has come to a family that no doubt his heart is knitted in fellowship with. This is the family, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, that Jesus has come to know. In fact, it is their brother Lazarus at the report of his demise that we get the scripture, Jesus wept. Jesus is with a family that he is quite comfortable being in fellowship with. He knows Mary and Martha, and so there is a depth of understanding as to what it means when Jesus comes to your house. Amen. And so the Bible paints a picture of these two sisters as they begin to ready their home for the number of guests that will no doubt come and participate in the small group tonight. I began to think as I read our text about my wife, Barnes. I don't know if your wife is anything like my wife, but I learned early on in our marriage that you don't just invite people to the house. You have to ask permission. So for all of you young unmarried men, let this preacher give you a little bit of advice. You go from one woman's house to another woman's house, and both of them are bossy. I feel my help coming. You know, if it were up to me, I would just say to you, if you were in Kansas City today, why don't you just come by the house? We'll we'll find something. Surely there's some leftovers or there's a pie or something. I'll brew a pot of coffee and we can just sit around and talk about whatever we feel like in fellowship. But I learned very quickly after marrying sweet Natalie that everything in our house has a place. Amen. 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 Some of y'all don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm real. laughs> It's got a place. Yeah. Got a place. You know, when I was in college, I had a class at Memorial Hall at 7.15. Nobody should have a class in college Amen. at 7.15. Amen. Amen. And so I would get up early in the morning. I would give my clothes the smell test, you know. <laughs> It became cool. You know, we thought it was just a fad, but really it was folks that had dirty clothes that you would turn your sweatshirt inside out and wear it with a pair of slick pants and some flip-flops, and I would skate in like two minutes late. At the end of the semester, the professor said, Mr. Huckabee, you had wonderful things to say when you were here. <laughs> So I, I graduated with honors, though, thank the Lord, but I prayed my way through school. I didn't study. And so I wasn't accustomed when I got married to all of these nuances that come with having a home. I thought you just shoved clothes under the bed when guests came by. That you cried shut the closet doors and propped the chair up against it and just smiled when people came through to look at the bed. I just assumed that you know I have toddlers in my house. And so you're just accustomed to stepping on toys. That's just what I think, but not Natalie. Natalie's a southern girl, and, and everything in the house has a place, and, and everything has to be right. You don't just invite people over, but you ready the house for yes. guests. Amen. Amen. Come on. I learned that. Yeah. 
And I just got a feeling tonight that Martha is a lot like my Natalie. That Martha is preparing the house. That she knows that everything has a place, that every plate has a spot to be stacked, and everything has order to it. And, and you don't come by unless everything is put together just right. But Mary noticed something different that was far more important than placement and organization. And I'm for all of that and believe in its place in the church. But Mary said, there is nothing that is going to come between me and the fact that the Lord is in the house. Amen. 